this week on Titan. When you're dealing with big horsepower and big engines, American built right here at Edelbrock. 1,350 degree aluminum. Produce up to 1,000 heads a week. Three machines running nonstop. The day that I was gonna kill myself. Our country was built on a foundation of American manufacturing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. But today, we've seen millions of jobs lost and 100,000 manufacturing plants have been closed. And to the republic for which it stands. Join us as we take a stand for American manufacturing and fight to bring those jobs back home. One nation, one nation, one, one nation. nation. Under God, under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This industry is hidden from the general public, locked behind closed doors. Today, all of that changes. Every week on Titan, we're gonna show you great American companies that are manufacturing and doing it big right here in America. We're gonna teach advanced manufacturing techniques and we're gonna clearly show you how to bring work back to our shores. It's time to put Americans back to work. So I'm excited today because we're gonna take a break, we're gonna do some teaching, and I'm gonna show my guys why it's important to run fast and be efficient. I want my machinists to see with their eyes and hear with their ears what it means to cut fast, that every time they're cutting something, they're looking, how do I get aggressive with it? How do I save money for my customers? When the customers see that we're fighting for them, then they're gonna fight for us. We always run fast, but there's a lot of shops that I go into and they're actually running slow. Like they're running at 20 inches a minute, you know? But the thing is, they don't know. They're not in this shop. All these companies, they got all these products, you know what I mean? They're sending them over to China and they're running over there at mediocre speeds with cheap labor. But what I'm saying is we can run them right here way faster and let this make the money. You know what I mean? Use our heads to make this make the difference. Some people just don't get it. They're used to running slow, they're not ready to be aggressive, and they've been in machining for so long that they don't want to accept the changes. So I want you guys to step up here. Feel free, get right on the glass. But here at Titans, we push it as hard as we can. I'm gonna run this thing at 800 inches a minute. Let's watch it rock and roll. Sound good? So what we're doing is we're going full depth. So we're going all the way down. And we take a 200,000 radial and then we just pound it all the way in. Watch this first cut. A little <laughs> That's just the machine, man. There's a million different kinds of tools you can use. You just gotta know your speeds and feeds. How fast can you go without breaking a tool? That's the difference between competing and not competing. That's how you're going to make money. I used to work at shops where we would run at like 100 inches a minute. Coming into this shop, I remember my first time seeing all these numbers. It was definitely something that I had never, ever seen before. And it opened my eyes to how, how crazy these machines can actually run. And seeing it is super cool to watch. That's it, man. Under two minutes. Under two minutes. I've worked with Titan for over 15 years. Before at other shops, he was always wanting to push things to the limit faster, faster, and they are telling him, no, you can't do that. Now he has his own shop, and we can push machines as fast as we want to, as hard as we can. That equates to saving customers money, getting parts out quicker. Every little cut matters. You gotta know exactly how to approach it and the speeds, and you can go super fast around certain areas, but you might have to slow down a little bit and then pick up speed. Using the Autodesk Inventor software, that's a big key to cutting big chunks of material off at a high speed. 
I want to run this one at 100 inches a minute, which is actually a decent feed rate. A lot of people are running right now at 100 inches a minute. It's just a standard, pretty fast speed rate for average machine shops. All right, so check this out. It's gonna be like really exciting. Friday. Having little moments with my guys like today is really important. Every single day we come in here and we machine products. We manufacture products for companies all over America. These companies have to be successful. They have to have their costs lowered. At 100 inches a minute making this product, it took 17 and a half minutes. At $75 an hour, just this roughing pass costs $21.92. When you ran it at 800 inches per minute, it dropped the price down to $2.51. On this particular project, we run 2,000 parts every month. That's 24,000 a year. The end result is a savings of $465,000 a year for our customer. If manufacturing companies across this great nation would adapt the new processes, the new machines, five axis machining, running the Autodesk Inventor HSM software, the Imco tools, if they adapted the process of being aggressive, of running fast, of pushing the limits, then the customers wouldn't be looking for cheap labor. Don't beat them with cheap labor. Beat them with quality and low prices through advanced techniques. That's what you gotta do to keep your jobs right here in America. Next on Titan. Big horsepower and big engines. And on the day that I was gonna kill myself. Chilled in liquid nitrogen, 300 below zero. Thanks for watching this free episode of Titans of CNC. If you love what we're doing, please subscribe to our YouTube channel below. And if you want to learn this trade for free, go to academy.titansofcnc.com and we'll learn it together and take it all to another level. Boom. Watch, watch this first cut. That's pretty awesome, huh? That's crazy. That's yeah, crazy. It's just making it happen. There's something about cranking through metal that is exhilarating. It's amazing, right? You know, a lot of people, they don't understand the fact that, you know, we're here because of our customers. If you don't have customers, you're no longer in business. You know what I mean? So you really have to get that point across to the employees, to the viewers, to everyone, you know? So as a dad and you guys taking over this company, you guys are the future. You know what I mean? You always got to think to yourselves, customer is key. Solve people's problems and you're going to be successful. And so are you leaving tomorrow? Yep, I'm going down to Southern California, going to Edelbrock. Oh, Edelbrock, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, they do it big. They actually cast their own products, CNC machine them, assemble them, and ship them out. And we're going to cover the whole process, show the viewers how American manufacturing is done. Nice. Yeah, it's going to be good, man. All right, so you guys take care of the place while I'm gone. All right? Yeah, I guess we can this cool. time. All right, <laughs> let's go, man. Yeah. It is a glorious day down here in Southern California. We're down here in San Jacinto, and we're at the Edelbrock Sandcasting Foundry. This is where they create the aluminum castings for their parts. 
Edelbrock is an amazing American company that has like 8,000 different products. They ship worldwide. They do everything right here in the great United States of America. And one of the tricks to their success is that they're able to make their own material. They take a bunch of metal, they heat it, melt it, and pour it into these huge castings and they make it happen. Then they take the castings out, go through the processes, machine it, assemble the parts, and they ship them out worldwide. I'm excited, I've never seen this process in person. We're gonna go in here with the cameras and it's gonna be amazing. Let's go check this thing out. Hi, I'm Titan, and I'm here to see Eric and Charles. Welcome to Edelbrock. Yes, they were waiting for you. Hold awesome. on just a Thank second, you. please. Hi, Charles. I have Titan here to see you. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay, you. I'm here to see you. Perfect. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Hey, Titan. Hey, Eric. Good to see you. See you Tom, again. Charles. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Welcome to Edelbrock Foundry. Here at the Edelbrock Foundry, we produce over 10,000 parts on a weekly basis that go to our machine shop in Torrance, California, which amounts to over 100,000 pounds of molten aluminum poured into molds and made into castings and produced right here at this facility on a weekly basis. We're really proud to have three facilities here in California where we do that literally from, you said, cast aluminum to finished product, machined and shipped out to the consumer, all controlled here so that we have good quality and we can guarantee good performance as well. Absolutely. I'm in manufacturing shops all the time, but I've not been in one yet that does their own castings. And when you're dealing with big horsepower and big engines, you know, you gotta have good castings, that's right? right. If you Solid have problems casting. and stuff, you're, you can't get that horsepower, that's right? That's right, that's right. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys got going on right here. Right, we're excited to have you, and I think we're ready to get going. You ready to see our shop? I'm ready to go. All right, let's oh, do this. Let's do Metal Brock. Let's go. All right. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys got going on right here. All right, we're excited to have you, and I think we're ready to get going. You ready to see our shop? I'm ready to go. All right, let's oh, do this. Let's do Metal Brock. Let's go. All right. All right. So Titan, we built this facility in 1990, and we poured our first casting that year uh, for the Edelbrock Corporation. And uh, this is a picture of what the facility looked like. You can see it's pretty clean. Everything just was installed at this time. We even have Vic Edelbrock Jr. here delivering a load of ingot, the first load of ingot to the That's furnace. Awesome. I'm excited. I can hear the growl outside that door. Well, we're excited to have Ooh. you. We can't wait to show your operation out there. Titan, you ready to go see it? I'm ready. Let's go. All right, let's do it. This place is huge. Yeah, Titan, I'd like to show you the first step in the process. That's the core process. We're in our core department here where we uh, have about 26 core machines where we run uh, two shifts. So we're running 20 hours a day here, making over 60,000 cores. That's awesome. Yeah. So this is a core for an intake manifold. And what you see here is inside the part and all this disappears, leaving the cavity inside the part. It's awesome, it's incredible, it's epic. I can't wait to show you the rest of the process. You ready I to can't go? Wait, man. I'm excited to stop this. All right, me too. Let's go. Let's go oh. check it out. I can't believe how many cores they're everywhere. Titan, it takes a lot of cores to support our foundry operation. The average ratio is five to one, cores to castings produced. Okay. How many castings do you guys make in this building? We make uh, between 10 and 11,000 castings every week in this particular building right here. How many different part numbers? We make over 1,000 different unique castings at our facilities here. 1,000 different parts, and then thousands of each one. That's right. We have two different core sand types here. We have a, this tan sand comes out of a Michigan area, Midwest area, and then the lighter color sand is mined out of Nevada, so it's called a Nevada 60 sand. So it's all American made. That's right, even American the process. Built, even the sand, man, right from the very foundation. Mm. So Titan, this is the, the heart of the foundry process we have going on here at Edelbrock. So they're making this right now as a small block Chevy casting, a cylinder head for a small block Chevy motor. 
So basically what this is happening is the drag mold moves over to the, what we call the cope elevator. The cope is going to come down in a precise movement, set that cope on top of the drag without disturbing any of the sand you see in that, in that side of the flap. So this is the bottom of the mold. Yes. The sand, the core, is inside. It comes over, a lid gets put on it. That's right. I see a big old robot over here <laughs> dropping molten metal. That's right. And it just fills it all up, yep. cools down, comes apart, and it's apart all hollow because now the sand's gone. That's right, that's right. And that's it's done. And then that goes to a machine shop. Yep. High tech. High tech. CNC machine. Over 70 of them in our facility in Fort Seven of them. Yep. Ooh, I can't wait to see it. So Titan, here we are at the furnace right here. This is the ingot that we load in our furnace. So we're melting this at 1300 degrees and pouring it in the mold that we use to make the casting. This is A356 prime alloy. That's what we use in all of our casting. And that's why your quality is like exceptional. That's right, American made. We do quality checks every two hours in this plant to ensure that we build a quality product for our customers. So then you got all these big bins stacked wide, and this is the same material as over here. That's right. It's just been used, and that's the excess? Yes, exactly. So what we do is we pour about 50% extra metal into the mold so that it can feed that casting, so we have a good solid casting. What we do is we take all the gates and risers, we cut them off, and we put them right back in the furnace, remelt it down, and pour it into the next mold. There's no waste. That's right. So we're just using it over and over and over, and the trimming, you just keep putting it back in. That's right, that's right. And anything that we have that we have to send out to the scrapyard, they remelt it and then sell it off to some of the secondary future. Awesome. Next on Titan. That's hot! Super strong and powerful, super accurate. But the end result is destruction. So Titan, here's where we melt all of our metal right here. So what we have in here is 1,350 degree aluminum ready to be poured into molds right here. So it's all molten right here. That's it. We're about to open the door right here. Stay whoa, back, it's hot. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Yeah, it's hot. So, That's hot. As you can see, we got 1,350 degree aluminum here ready to go in the mold. Yeah, I don't hot. walk away from too much, but that is hot, man. Yes, it is. <laughs> so that's all molten aluminum. Right. And then you're putting everything up there and just dropping it inside. That's right. We take the ingot, we melt it, and it turns into this aluminum right here. I'm getting a sunburn, man. I got to yeah. go. All right. Thanks, man. Hey, Titan, let me show you where we're making the molds and the heart of the operation is over here at the molding line. So Big old robot. We have a robotic uh, ladle here that takes care of this process because of the heat that's generated right here. I can see the sweat coming down. I can yeah. feel it. It is so hot right here. You got a big old robot, he's not complaining. He's just working nonstop, making right. it happen. And then you got skilled American workers operating the robot, telling them what to do. Slave labor, but it's a robot. Boom. That's right, that's right. <laughs> that's it. So a lot of people say like, you know, robotics, so it makes people lose jobs. Right. But it helps with efficiency. Exactly. And the you got all these guys running it. That's right. right? That's and right. it's doing the job that people can't do. Exactly. Especially here. Right. So what we do is we take a job that's uh that's maybe not so conducive for the, the person to do it, and we add a robot in there to take care of it. But there's still uh, people that program the robots, that, that build the robots, and so forth. So it really doesn't displace any jobs. It just makes us more efficient as a manufacturer. And we're pouring the molten aluminum right into the mold itself to make the casting. And you got hundreds of castings, like, that's traveling all the way down. That's right, that's right. We pour a mold about every 60 seconds on this line, and we make about 600 molds in a 10-hour shift here every day. We do that's that awesome. two shifts a day, 20 hours a day on this line. Things a beast. Yeah, it is. Woo! <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. It's all good. All right, so Titan, here we are at the punch out. This is the end of the casting process. What we're doing here is we're picking up this flask that's got the casting and the molding stand in there, and we're picking this up and we're punching it out and taking that's the casting awesome. out of the flask. So this is the casting. Yeah. All the melted aluminum's inside. That's right, that's right. Picking it up 
and that big old boy right there is just coming down and, and it's just dropping it on the floor. It's that's, just popping it down. That's huh? right, that's right. It's awesome. And this guy picks it up and takes it back. Yep, the return arm picks up that flask, rotates it and sends it back down the line to start and, the process. Where's, where's the part? It's on the other side? Yeah, let's go take a look at it. Okay, cool. They just drop down right here. They yeah. grab them yeah. and just pop them in here. That's right. So right now you can't really tell what the part looks like. That's right. But once you go through, it's going to be all cleaned up. Okay, let's go look at the finishing process right now. Come on, let's go. All right, man. All right, so you got 200 workers just in this building, not including that building or the one over there. That's right. Where do you get them? How do you train them? Well, what we do here is we're just looking for people with uh, that want to work and have the desire to work and learn a skill. So we'll bring them in here and train them when, in different areas of our facility, whether it's the finish department or in the foundry department or in the core department. And we have a lot of guys that have been here 20, 30 plus years that work for this company. That's that are so exactly good. the type of people you just described. And you guys have been in business since 1938. That's right. Still growing. Yep. Still making it happen. Still making it happen. Still growing to this day. Still making this company bigger and better. We're always looking to innovate, improve our processes, and make a better product, a higher quality product, quicker, faster, better. It can be done in America. We're doing it in America. We're doing it right now today. We've been doing it for the last 75 years here at Edelbrock in the United States of America where manufacturing was built. And now we're going to go do some finishing work on the casting. That's right. And then we're gonna take them to the other building and do some machining. You bet. I'm oh, I love it. <laughs> All right, man. Let's do it. So tight, here we are in our finished department. This is where we do our final processing of the casting itself. So what we're doing here is we're taking the gates and risers off, we're cutting that off. We do rough grinding with a backstand grinder. And then we right over my shoulder here, we're doing our final deburr process on a small block Chevy cylinder head here behind us. So. Awesome. So this is a part that just got casted, it just came out, they brought it out, knocking everything off, yep. getting stacked all right here. Yeah, these are actually headed to heat treat from this position okay. to go to heat treat, okay. then heat treat, and then the machine shop. Okay, yep. got it. That's right, we're making all this for people of America to enjoy their American cars. No, oh, take the horsepower just to another level. That's right. I see all your guys working away. Stacks of parts, pallet after pallet, truckload after truckload. Made right Going here out. in the USA. Made right here in the USA. That's right. Right here in America. Yeah. Right here at Edelbrock. Yep. American built. American built. Boom. <laughs> What an incredible journey. We're here at Edelbrock. We've seen sand and melted aluminum form castings get deburred. And now we're going into the machine shop, the CNC machine shop where all the magic happens. I wanted to take a break though. Last Saturday, I had the honor and privilege of speaking to 43 individuals. These individuals have come through the parole system, through the probation system. Some have been addicted to drugs. Some have been incarcerated. They've gone through struggles, and I've gone through struggles. And I have one shot to speak into them, to bring them out, to inspire them. When I talk about my faith, that doesn't necessarily reflect Mav TV or Edelbrock or any of my sponsors. That's me. That's how I came out of the darkness. And when I'm speaking to these guys, I'm just coming at them and just being truthful about my journey. This just happened last Saturday and I wanna share it with you. Hey, there he is. Welcome, welcome. How's everybody doing? All right, oh, good. Yeah. So what we saw with Project Heart is that the same thing that brings people to gangs and to criminal activity was the need for love, acceptance, friendship, family. If we could just pass that off by getting out of the clinical scenario or the office and getting out to where we could both be real people together, we saw great things happening. You gotta keep your cool. It's the same thing in life, man. There's a lot of people that are gonna try to come into your life and try to rile you up. You know what I mean? They're gonna try to get you hyped. 
They're going to feed into that thing that feels good in you, but the end result is destruction. You know, you don't realize that when you're, when you're using, you know, you're, you're behind closed doors. The kids are on the other side of the door, banging on the door. You know, I'll be out in a minute, I'll be out in a minute. And that's the kind of stuff that people don't get. And with Project Heart, we've been there. We, we, you know, we understand the struggles. Same thing with Titan, you know, he's been there, he understands. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It matters that because of that, you are qualified to speak. Had I not gone to the gutters and met these people, I wouldn't be as qualified to talk to a larger group of people. I was lonely. I didn't have any friends. I didn't have the support group. And on the day that I was gonna kill myself, on a Sunday, I ended up on my knees, and I don't know how it happened, but I started praying, and I started like yelling at God. I started like, I just, all of it, man. You know what I mean? Like I was right there. I was like right here, ready to like do anything for you. You know, I, I'm lonely, Lord. I just like, please bring good people into my life. And, and I fell asleep. The next day, I met my wife, Gina. That was 2001, and we've been together like every day since. We want you to find a place that's safe. We want you to be able to find a real acceptance real friendship and when you're down and out we will be there with you in my shop i can wire i can run air i put the machines in i do everything like i got a big crew and i give them all the credit but it's my mind i just get all of it but i had to learn from certain individuals even though they were negative situations it wasn't my time to be there i thought it was but god had another plan there comes a point where when you're not happy doing what you're doing, you need to find something that you enjoy doing. Helping other people has really inspired my life. What a joy it is that we've had the chance to be able to bring people and gather them together and actually show them that they don't have to go to a gang, they don't have to get involved with criminal activity to be able to feel love, acceptance, hope. They can come to a group of friends that will be with them to really help take care of their heart. This is Brandon. Brandon came in on his day off to make each of you a part. So everyone is going to get one of these. I left it raw on one side, and then we cleaned it up on the other side so you can see the difference. And Philippians 4.13 is on my truck. I'm experiencing a lot of trivial and triumphs and hard times in my life right now and, and I've, I found where I wanted to give up and I heard the same thing in his story and where he didn't and it's made him a better person today. Companies all over America have products and each one has parts that assemble together and that's what we do, is we take raw material and we create something with it. If you're not making something from nothing, if somebody else is, then your money's going somewhere else and your people are not working. Watching uh, Titan, it just really helps inspire me to know that what I'm doing, uh, it gives me more motivation. When my kids were two and three and born, I was in prison. I thought my life was over. I was in lockdown and, and knowing how bad I was, you know, that when you have 16 years, it's just a punch away for more. I can talk to you guys, but I don't know all of you guys. I don't know your stories, but hopefully today you guys can understand that I'm not a miracle case. I suffered, but how fearless I was in life on the streets, I'm like that in my faith. There's times that the enemy convicts me to be bad and she doesn't know, other people don't know, but he knows and he's given me a second chance in life. I get to raise my kids now, I get to like hug them and hold them, watch them laugh. I get a chance, man, and he gave that to me. You guys understand what I'm saying? There's a time where it doesn't matter who's on your left or your right, 
There's a time that all that matters is who's above you and within you. Because when you know Him, it only gets better. What we've done in our past is not the definition of who we are today. We can live up to a, a better standing of being men and women in this, in this group as a fellowship together. There's a purpose and there's a reason for everything that we've been through and it's to make you stronger in uh, moving forward. Instead of looking at those as negative things, build them as positive. My place would be to bring this message to the next person that doesn't feel that an opportunity to live a better life exists. Titan, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your passion. Thank you for sharing your heart, your faith. These are things that are building blocks that take people from wreckage to healing to hope. Thank you. Next on Titan, it is all perfection. I see three machines running nonstop. So no, how much can't. power is there? Well, it's 625. So this is truly an American company, a family that went after the American dream, a father, a son, 600 employees, black and white pictures all over the place that just tell the story of Edelbrock. What's this picture? This picture is of Vic Edelbrock Sr. at their house, and this is his trophy case. Uh, Vic was an avid racer. I mean, racing is what got him started, being on the salt flats and making better products to run faster, to, to win. This is just showcasing Edelbrock power at its finest. That's awesome. So he was making parts not to sell, but to make his car go faster. That's how it all started, yeah. But eventually it worked into a business, you know. Hey, Titan, I want you to check this out. This was really cool. These are pictures of Vic's first purpose-built shop. It almost looks like it looks like out there now, you know, with the same type of parts. It's just, now it's massive. Absolutely, this and is. And high tech. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, back then it wasn't too high tech, but it was hard work mm -hmm. and determination is what got those products out there. So good. Oh, check this one out. This is Vic Jr. And this would be in the uh, early 70s. And this was the Step and Fetch It One, which was one of our test vehicles. And, and back then, you know, Vic had a full fleet of test vehicles. And if you wanted to start working in this case, it would be a Camaro and a small block Chevy. Mm. Bought a vehicle and just put your parts on and started running it. As you can see, it says, field test car, research and test, testing center. You know, this is just one of the main R&D vehicles we've had over the years. American horsepower, American built. Speaking of horsepower, this is a really neat photo for us. This is one of the engines, that first engines that Vic Edelbrock Sr. was able to create one horsepower per cubic inch, which at the time was unheard of. So this is really an important picture in the history of the company. This is where we really, performance starts to take off. Awesome. It's just, it's just a work of art right there. Edelbrock. It looks the same like it does out there. Sure does. Wow. Some things change, some things don't. Mm. My name's Scott Herman. I'm a chief manufacturing engineer here at Edelbrock. I've been here over 30 years. Over those years, I've seen incredible growth from a small building to a bigger building to now five buildings all across the country. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Hey, Eric, good to see you. Oh, I can introduce you to Titan. Scott, nice, nice to meet you, nice to meet you man. So Scott, this is the exact part that comes from the foundry. Yeah, this is the raw casting. This is how it comes from us from the Everything foundry. Everything got cut off over here. And then basically, you guys are just finishing that, and it comes just like this. Correct. So bringing it in here, preparing it for the CNC machine, you guys make the casting. You guys have years of experience, a lifetime, so you have a lot of confidence. We still gotta inspect the parts coming in, right? Absolutely, and that's what we're doing. After it comes from the foundry, we wanna do one final check to make sure that there's anything that anybody missed or if there's any uh, different imperfections that we wanna fix, we can fix them now before it goes to the machine shop. Cool, and once it goes in the shop, it goes right into your fixtures, and you just bring it, kiss it, Correct. make it beautiful. And then after we machine it, we'll inspect it again. Cool. And 100% of the process is American made. Correct, we control it from the very beginning all the way to the finished product. From the sand in Michigan, from the sand in Nevada, to the casting, to the machining. Correct. I love it, man. Yep. You guys are doing it big. Absolutely. Oh. Oh. So Titan, now that you've seen the foundry, you've seen what we've done in here, now we're totally ready to head it off into the machine shop. 
You want to head off and see what we're going to the machine shop? We're going in the machine shop. This is the CC machine. We're ready to go. Woo! I love that, man. All right, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome. We were only producing up to about 500 heads a week. We needed to produce up to 1,000 heads a week. So to do that, we looked to some manufacturers, and the best way to do it was to do it with a cell. Woo-hoo! Pallets for days. This is an awesome cell you got here. It is. It's my most favorite part of the machining process right here. These machines are great. They're super strong and powerful, super accurate. So we'll do machine the deck, and we'll put uh, some locating holes in here. The same holes that it locates on the engine, we'll put in here. And then from here on out, every process that's done is located off those same Perfect. valves. Perfect. So that's your datum A. It is Your correct, first datum, datum where everything comes off of there. And from that point on, it is all perfection. That's the goal, yes. Pallets for days. This is an awesome cell you got here. So how many pallets do you have? Uh, this cell contains 24 pallets, and we can run whatever cylinder heads we need to at any time. All the machines, all three machines are tooled up identical, so they can run any cylinder head at any time. I see three machines running nonstop, 24 pallets. They're all tooled up. You don't have to do that again. They're all fixtured up. That doesn't have to happen again. It's just run time, right? Yeah. And you're running these machines at their peak levels. Therefore, when it comes to like selling a part to your customer, it's just the runtime. It's not all the setup and the tools and everything, right? That's correct. That's and the advantage of the cell. Absolutely. And that's how you make it in America. That's correct. We, we maintain such repeatability. Every cylinder head that goes out of here is exactly the same as the last one, whether we ran it last week or last month or yesterday. Yeah. So that's the thing. And our customers and our performance is proven, and that's why they buy our product. I machine and program parts like your machinists do, and you guys do, but a cell is just the same thing. You literally have three spindles, all these pallets, and they're just being timed perfectly. And the artistry to make these pallets and the part to be held rigid so we can run it fast and everything to work seamless, that is like artistry, right? It, it is, is perfection. That's and creativity and innovation. That's innovation. what it takes to be successful today in the machine shop. And that's what you guys are doing right here at Edelbrock, doing it big. This all is day incredible. long, that's what we do. You know that Edelbrock and America is all about quality. So let's go to the quality department and see how we maintain it. Woo. It's all about quality, man. Let's do it. You got it. So Scott, so how many machines do you have in the machine shop? Just under 70. 70 machines. And most of them are big. Yeah, most of them are big. Some of them are small. Depends on the parts they're doing. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Putting Americans to work. Absolutely. And they're doing right it. Right here in California. Right here in if Torrance. If you can do it here, you can do it anywhere. Absolutely. That's so awesome, man. So here is our quality control department. So Scott, really the most important room in the entire company right here, right? If you don't have an American quality product, you just don't have a business, right? That's correct. And our department here is, uh, has state-of-the-art equipment and we're checking parts continuously to validate all our processes out in the shop. How many CMM, ordinance measuring machines, do you have in this room? So we have five CMMs, two of them are CNC driven, check parts again and again. The manual machines will check any of the other machines that uh, have one-off operations. Or we also check incoming parts from products that we don't buy to verify before we go into assembly. Okay. It helps that you guys have your own products because you're experts. You run them every single day. So you really know if you have uh, you know, certain places where you have issues and other places where the tolerances are wide open and you're able to identify those and go after them, right? So Correct. you guys pick like, you know, every fifth part, every hundredth part? Depends on the size of the production run. Typically, we always do a first article on every single setup that's done in the shop. They have to be done and bought off 100% before we turn it loose into production. But after that, um, we typically, if the job's running for more than a day, we typically do one inspection per day. Once the inspection is complete, where does the part go from there? So now we're ready to go assemble it, package it and ship it worldwide. Worldwide. Let's go. American made. You got it. Oh. 
here at Edelbrock, we believe in employing American workers. We have over 600 workers, which means 600 families. So we take American manufacturing extremely seriously. Edelbrock ships tens of thousands of parts every single week of over 8,000 part numbers. And now we're finally heading to the cylinder head assembly, which is the last part of our cylinder head process. We're almost there. Almost there. That's awesome. So this is where it all happens, right here. Yep, we're finally at the final stage of the cylinder head assembly. The first thing that happens before it comes here is we have to press in the seat valve seats and the valve guides. The seats are chilled in liquid nitrogen, which is 300 below zero. 300. And that's 300 degrees. So it actually gets smaller. Correct. It shrinks the seat down, which makes it easier to install. Okay. Once you install the seat, then it meets the temperature of the aluminum and expands and locks in and they never come and out. It's like one piece of metal. Exactly. Uh, after the parts are pressed in, we actually put in the uh, rocker studs, and we actually check the height of what the valve springs need to be. We install the valves, and then we assemble the valve springs. Then we'll check each chamber to make sure that there's no vacuum leaks on the engine whatsoever. Then it's ready for final packaging. Awesome. So you box it up, palletize it. Does it go to distributors, or you guys just ship it worldwide? Or? Ship it worldwide, right from here in Torrance. So anywhere in the world, they got like sports cars, American muscle cars, and they got your parts on them. That's true. We send them all over the world. Yeah, that's so good. That's, that's very cool. That's awesome, man. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you. So good. Absolutely. Oh, great job, man. Thank you. Woo. Built right here at Edelbrock and proudly made in the great USA. Boom. So, Titan. Now you've seen the whole process, from sandcast foundry, finished machining, QC, it's all come together. Shipping it worldwide, American manufacturing, American built right here in California, right here at Edelbrock. You bet. Mmm. So Titan, this is what it's all about. Woo hoo, I love it. I mean, this is taking an already beautiful car, an already powerful car, taking it to the next level, making it even more powerful, an even better vehicle. An American-made car, American muscle, taking it to a higher level. Another level. Another level with more American-built parts. Absolutely. You bet. Oh! And you're going to let me drive it? You bet. Woo Have at it. Woohoo! I got the keys. This is going to be awesome. What an amazing journey. It's late at night, the moon is out at Edelbrock, down in Southern California. We came down here to pull back the curtains to show the viewers manufacturing being done right here in America on a huge level, and we weren't disappointed. Yeah, with a supercharger like this, you gotta, you gotta, a little, you gotta roll into so it. So how much can't... power is it really now with the supercharger? Well, it's 625. You gotta look at the technology, the innovation, the work ethic, the culture, the people, the foundation that makes this company great. We walked in to see Edelbrock making their own materials, their own sand castings, machining them, assembling them, inspecting them. Oh, American muscle. This thing is awesome. It's got some crazy power. That's what you guys do at Edelbrock, is just build incredible parts, all made in the great United States of America, and you make everybody's dreams come true. They buy toys, they work hard, blue collar America. They buy crazy cars and you help take it to a whole nother level. Absolutely, that's what we do every day. Mm, I love it, man. We had the vision to create this show because we wanted to make a difference. We wanted to have a voice. There are great American manufacturing companies doing it huge all across this great country. When you buy a product from Edelbrock, you're supporting all the workers that come in to make great American products. This is American manufacturing. Support it, believe in it, and take a stand with us as we fight for American jobs. Boom! Yeah, right here at Edelbrock! 
<laughs> you guys gotta cut that. I'm a group hug. Oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> okay, we're serving. Guys. We believe. That, that wasn't me. <laughs> God bless you and God bless America. I approve of this message. Boom. <laughs>